Hi, welcome to this tutorial on proof by mathematical induction. I'm going to show you how we can use this rule to prove this particular summation. I've got here sigma r going from 1 to n of r and we've got to show that it equals half of n all multiplied by n plus 1. And to do proofs like this what we need to do is show that it's true when n equals 1 first of all. So if we take the left hand side we'll say when n equals 1. When n equals 1 if we take the left hand side we've got sigma of r going from r equals 1 to 1. Well obviously this is just going to be 1. r is replaced with a 1 and we just do it once only. So we get 1. That's the left hand side. Now what about the right hand side here when n equals 1? We'll just say and a half of n, n plus 1. What does that come to? Well it's going to be half of n, n being 1, and then 1 plus 1 which is 2. And so we've got half of 2 which is 1. So you can see that we've got both sides of our summation here equal to one another. So it's true when n equals 1. So we'll just put here therefore true when n equals 1. So that's the first thing you do when you're proving something by induction. Check out that it works when n equals 1. And the next thing we do is we assume that it's true for some value of n. Let's say assume true for n equals k. So we'll just write that in here. Assume true for n equals some integer value, positive integer value, and in this case we call it k. So if it's going to be assumed true for n equals k, that means that if we did this summation, sigma of r, r going from 1 to k, then we would expect that result to be a half k bracket k plus 1. We're just substituting the n for a k here. So we'll just put that in there, half k k plus 1. Now what we've got to do now is always try and show that if it's true for n equals k, that it's going to be true for n equals k plus 1. So, in other words, we just, uh, we'll start here, okay, we'll just carry on. When n equals k plus 1, we're looking then at the sum of the series, sigma r, r going from 1 to n equals k plus 1. Now what's this going to be? Well what we're hoping that we can prove that it will be will be wherever we have an n there'll be a k plus 1. So we're hoping to end up with a half k plus 1 and then in this bracket k plus 1 plus another 1. In other words k plus 2. But at the moment if I want to sum up this series sigma r going from r equals 1 to k plus 1 then this must be equal to the sum of the series going from r equals 1 just to k and then we've got the next term the k plus 1 term when r equals k plus 1. So when r equals k plus 1 this is just going to end up being k plus 1. Okay so we're adding the term k plus 1. Okay, now, let's just come down here and we'll see if we can tidy this up. So, let's just write that back in that therefore we've got sigma of r going from r equals 1 to k plus 1 is equal to, well, for this summation here, we assumed that it was true, okay, for n equals some value k. So we can copy this result in. We know that that first part, okay, is going to be a half k, k plus 1. And then we have to add on the next term, which is k plus 1 in this example. So that would be plus k plus 1. Now remember what we're trying to get this to come out at. We hope to get 
half of k plus 1, and then in this bracket, k plus 1 plus another 1, k plus 2 in other words. So when I look at this, I can pull out a half, because I want to have a half, and I also want this n to be k plus 1. And I can see that I've got k plus 1 in both terms here. So I'm going to pull out k plus 1 as a common factor. So if I put a bracket up here, then to get this term, all I'm going to need is to multiply it by just k. And when it comes to this term, I need to just multiply this with 2. OK. This is looking good, because if I just rewrite the first part in, half k plus 1, then can you see for k plus 2, all I've got to do is rewrite this as k plus 1 plus another 1. So you can see, I hope, that wherever I had my n, I've now got k plus 1, k plus 1, k plus 1. So on the basis that it was true for n equals k, I've been able to show that this summation is also true for n equals k plus 1. So let's just write that in next, that therefore true for n equals k plus 1. Now since I know that it's true for n equals 1, let's just write that in, true for n equals 1, then it's always true for k plus 1. So if k stood for 1, it must be true for n equals 2. And if it's true for n equals 2, it must be true for n equals 3, and so on. So since true for n equals 1, we just need to write in, it must be true, OK, for n equals 2, 3, 4, and so on. In fact, it's true for all positive integers. So we say n is a member of the positive integer set of numbers. OK, that's short for n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. OK, so I hope it's given you some idea then how we go about proving something like a summation of a series by mathematical induction.